It's, it's changing, it's changing rapidly. Um, you know, eight years ago, it was a highly fragmented industry, no leaders, no standards. Um, uh, a lot of it was still uh, hidden, you know, in, in the shadows, and, and, and part of our focus has been to, to bring the industry out of the shadows and, and into the light. Um, you know, the, the uh, opportunities are, are different in, in different parts of the world in that uh, it's still a very nascent industry in Colorado or California um, compared to Canada where, you know, there are, um, I don't know exactly today, but there are a dozen companies that have, uh, that are public on the TSX. They have uh, hundreds of millions of dollars of cash on their balance sheets. And there's a potential that those Canadian companies end up being the, the consolidators uh, of this industry at some point. In the United States and in most countries around the world, almost all the investors are, are private uh, investors. They are uh, high net worth individuals, family offices. Um, you know, we, we closed the first institutional investor into this industry back in uh, 2015, and, and it was Founders Fund, um, led by Peter Thiel. Um, and that was, that sort of, at the time, we said that gave other smart investors um, permission to make an investment in this industry. And we said that, I'm not sure we really believed it at the time, but it did tend to be, it did prove out to be true. Um, and so you're starting to see uh, institutional private equity firm, venture capital firms, um, uh, some hedge funds, uh, and, and much larger institutions um, make investments in, in this industry. Um, in, in, in the United States and in the legal markets uh, outside the United States. And, uh, you know, our last, our last round, uh, we, we raised a, a round of capital into Tilray, uh, $60 million Canadian. There were 10 investors, um, and nine of them um, were from the U.S., one was from Canada, and nine of them had never made, they were all institutional investors, all, all 10, nine of them had never made an investment in the cannabis industry before. Um, and so, so that's, that's the big change. Over the next 12 months, you'll see, um, I predict you'll see almost every major institutional investor uh, in the U.S. make an investment in this industry. There are, there are roughly 30 U.S. states that have legalized medical cannabis um, and roughly 30 countries that have legalized medical cannabis. We'll add, in 2018, we'll add probably half a dozen more U.S. states and closer to 10 countries around the world that have legalized medical cannabis. Uh, in terms of adult use legalization, you, know, you have nine, nine U.S. states now um, and, and one country. Um, Uruguay, um, but in, in 2018, um, we like to we like to say that two of the world's largest economies are legalizing cannabis for adult use. Uh, on January 1st, California, um, you know, the fifth or sixth largest economy in the world, legalized cannabis for adult use, and California will be extremely important in terms of brands and culture and the brands you see uh, on TV and in, in movies and things like that. And then Canada uh, will legalize uh, adult use cannabis at the end of the summer. Um, and, and so uh, we currently, about 80% of our investments are medical and about 20 are for adult use. But we see that um, ultimately flipping over the next five years to be 80% uh, adult use and 20% medical. The biggest one would be um, people who uh, don't believe that there are risks. Um, and, and you'd be surprised how many um, how many people who operate in this industry in the U.S. just don't imagine that there are any risks um, from, from the federal government. And I've spent a lot of time with large, um, large operators in, in Colorado who have um, uh, a, a huge list of, of problems. They have, they have problems banking, they have problems 
you know, their credit cards have been shut off. Their their wives, their spouses, their husbands, sh uh, credit cards have been our credit cards have been shut down. Bank accounts have been closed, um, and so people who operate in this industry have banking problems. People who uh, operate in this industry in Colorado have tax problems uh, with IRS Code Two Eighty E, um, and there's. Uh, it's just very complex, and so we spend a lot of time digging into how people operate and how people think about risk and how people um, manage those risks from a legal perspective. Um, that's probably the, one of the biggest areas of, of focus for us. We definitely have to, to deal with those issues. Um, you know, we, have, we have bank accounts here in the U.S. with, um, with banks and, and people at those banks who know us well, right? They, they know who we are. I'm very public about what I do for a living. Um, and so it's, it's not like we're going to hide um, the, the use of these, these funds. Um, and, and so, uh, but banking is, it's also difficult internationally, or, or everything in this industry is difficult, whether it's eight years ago, hiring a lawyer was difficult um, when we told them, this is who we are, this is what we want to do. Um, hiring an accountant to, uh, to, to do our um, finances or our taxes or an audit firm, all of those things uh, were harder than they had ever been for me in any other industry. Um, simple check the box items in other industries became six month projects. Um, and so that's, that's what's really different. Um, it's getting easier, um, but it's still it's still really hard because you have this conflict between um, you have this conflict between federal and state law.